thought I'd just do a quick one. Uh, I'm just fitting up some 31 spline axles to my uh, 9 inch that's in the QE. We've got it all up on uh, blocks here. I'm just about ready to pull out. You probably won't be able to see in the dark. I'm just going to pull the diff out. But at the same time, the reason I'm pulling that out is I need to um, make a new drive shaft that takes the um, 1350 universals. So I've got a couple of welding ends, chromoly, and that goes with so. That will fit into the Muncie. And of course, you've got to change the um, diff end if you haven't already got a 1350 diff end, which I do not have. So I have to start here because that will require some disassembly. Um, well, pretty much full disassembly of the diff head. So I figured while I was doing that, I would pull apart the locker again. And this is an old Holden axle. So this is what I've got in there at the moment, which is the 29 splines. Uh, these will be cut to length. These are uh, picked up from VPW. These are strange axles with a 31 on them. Um, it's a shame they don't even come in a longer version. Well, I suppose it's to cover all sorts, but I got the longest ones available so that I could have the least amount of spline when I cut it back. But uh, the only reason being, when I've broken axles, these Holden ones always snap off here and leave the spline and the diff head. These are so much, I think that was about a hundred thou uh, extra diameter on the so you've got 1.345, so you only, yeah, 100 tower over, so about 1.1 inches there, so there's 200 tower extra in diameter that, that I don't think that's going to be the weak point that it is on the Holden ones, we hope. But the reason I'm really doing this is to clue you guys up if you buy some of these, I uh, think you're going to whack them straight in because they're uh, Holden Ford pattern on them. Um, if you think you're going to bolt them straight in, you'd be well wrong, because I had a bit of a measure up. Um, the main thing that would be a problem for most blokes will be that, I'll just do this by eye. Let's call this... Um, ooh, just for argument's sake, we'll call it 2.3 the bearing face. That's where the bearing will press onto and where the diff will be located, the axle will be located in the diff. So the best I can do here, so there's 150 thou, ooh, even I'm just eyeballing it, let's call it 2450. So the problem you've got is that the axle and the flange is slightly thicker I believe as well. Let's just check that. Call it 400. No, there's only 10 thou there, that's no worries. So it's just this distance between here and the bearing face is going to put your brakes and your wheel 100 thou further out, which normally you probably on a drum brake won't matter. Um, but as you can, I'll bring the light over. You can probably see the problem I'm going to run into is because I've welded the caliper bracket. You probably won't be able to see onto the diff, this distance is set. So there's no way that caliper is going to be in the center of that rotor with an extra 100 thou on it, which again, you can probably tolerate that on the stock style but, um, uh, of, of caliper, and that it's just a floating pin. 100 thou is probably nothing. That's 40 thou per mil. So you only got two point five millies, but I try to get everything square or, that I can. So the other uh, point for you guys, if you're going to do this in your driveway on a weekend, swap these axles in. I mean, uh, your holding pattern is the same. I don't, I don't know why you put thirty one spine axles in a nine inch and still stick with the seven sixteenth uh, stud. So you're going to have to drill out. Uh, the Ford pattern has uh, got press in for half inch studs. These guys are going to need drilling out, which you could probably do by hand. 
uh, and then pr pull your studs in. Um, I'll show you when I do that, but I'll most likely, yeah, I'll probably get that done. Machine shop will do that for me, I think, because I don't want them out at all. Um, they're taking the full load. That was the other thing, is the diameter here is quite a lot smaller. To, well, this locates my brake hat. 2.4, so yes, this is the standard 2.8, basically all clearance on 2.8, which is what the front is as well, and most mags are made to suit, so I'm unsure why Strange would make them that small, there must be a reason, but it's pretty easy to make a ring to fix that up, and I'm considering making quite a big, um, that space will also probably come out, let's say another 10mm to not only locate the hat, but to just slightly pick up the mag, and I'll probably tack it on the inside to this axle just to stop it falling off. And I'm just finding it with this setup that it's way easier to put your wheels on because even though this is not really a locating fit on the front, it's certainly so much easier to pick that 20 kg wheel up and slide it on. So um, yeah, I'm hoping to get that effect on the back as well. But uh, yeah, I don't want to make too much work for myself, we'll just get them in and sorted, but we'll pull the diff out, get it all apart, and I'll show you what I'm doing there probably later on, but it's like Christmas getting all these new bits, but this is my favourite part of the of the whole shop. This one's probably just as good, off the diff. these chrome ollie parts are pretty bloody expensive, but this is just beautifully machined finished. They'll be all five axis by the look of them. Same as uh, same as these welder ends but I'll be um, yeah the re reason I can't even get the strive shaft made yet is because the compared to the what have I got 1310 universal that's in there at the moment the yoke is shorter by oh, I don't know I'll show you when I get it out but the distance from the bearing to where the centre of the uni is will be different so there's no point making a drive shaft till I actually see what the difference is. And um, so the work never ends but anyway it's all good we like new parts. Anyway I'll catch you later.